If any of you came out on tour, you saw all of our honeypot goodies in the bathrooms, outside the bathrooms, kind of wherever. I am a newfound fangirl of this brand. So vaginas are serious business. We know that. And when you work hard and you play hard, it can get a little stressed. Well, they see you trying to self-care, but you don't have down there care routine, do you? Well, the honeypot is the first feminine care system powered by herbs. So tend to your garden, cherish your cha-cha, pamper your peach. When your honeypot works just as hard as you do, it deserves self-care too. The Honey Pot, made by humans with vaginas for humans with vaginas. So they have a long line of products. I love all of them. I'm obsessed with their intimate parts, body and face wipes. They have a urinary tract support supplement that I take now and it has been a game changer for me. They have some foaming washes that you can use in the shower. They have a vaginal care probiotic, tampons, menstrual cup, you name it. They have everything that you need to take care of your vajayjay because it's an important part. Okay guys, it's important. So please Please, please, please go and check out thehoneypot.co. Well, what is this? Welcome to the Lady Gang. That's amazing. Say that again. The Lady Gang. Things are about to change around here. Each week, we catch up with Hollywood's hottest girl posse, Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight. Um... Just a little Keltyism that was about to come out of my mouth. Sometimes what? I'll, sometimes in the group chat, I'll be like, "Hey, are we doing this thing tomorrow, or did we decide that we weren't going to do it?" And then she'll send a thumbs up. That means so there's yes. like she, thumbs up. No, not yes. no, there was. Two you have questions. to read through. It's are we doing this, or did I miss it? And are we not? You <laughs> can't oh. say yes because those are two contradictory things. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Not <laughs> reading. I need to speak better internet. <laughs> Better internet. So, yeah. anyways, um, Probably not. okay. Kelty cannot wait because she has been on the ride of her life. Oh my god! Should we just dive in? I, yes. I cannot. Wait okay, for this. it's time for good week. Yes, it is bad week. Oh no! All right, so I'm going to start with my bad week because the home edit ladies are here today, and I want to. I my home is. <laughs> A tornado not edited it is it is so far edited that i am taking instead of doing therapy once every two weeks i have gone back to the once a week schedule that's how much i am upset and i'm losing my mind mm. i want to start with the pantry so i have pantry moths which we are going to talk about a little bit further in the episode if you've ever had this please write me let me know how to get rid of them so essentially what happens is you bring in some rice or something from the grocery store that has larvae it's so disgusting in it oh. and Pantry moss can live anywhere. They can live in a plastic bag. They can live in a Girl Scout cookie. They can live, um, say you like open your jar and then they go in the pancake mix and then you close the jar and they're just going to live in there. So about two months ago, this is how long this has been going on. I walked into my pantry and I was like, oh, that's so weird. Look, a moth, huh? And Chris is like, yeah, I keep seeing them. But like, of course I'm spinning. I'm a tornado. I never really cook. I never really go in my pantry. So I'm like not really noticing them. So I'm killing them as I see them. And I was like, oh, must be, it's the winter in LA. Things are crazy. So at some point I notice and say to Chris, oh, we got to kill these moths. So we start looking at all the food and we find a bunch of rice that's, and we throw it out and we're like, okay, we're good. We're good. The moths don't go anywhere. Mm. So then I pull out a basket and it's literally the entire basket that I had like all of my rice in is just filled with. Anyway, I'm now at the point where today (laughs) after this, I've ordered $200 worth of things on Amazon. I have Googled how to get rid of these fucking moths. I know. Isn't there some kind of like a pesticide you you could do? You have to go. I'm going to take every single thing out of the... You know I'm going to do an Instagram about it. You have to pull everything out of the thing. You have to You have to put everything in the freezer. Every food has to be in the freezer for two days. Are you still eating the foods that the moths are in? Well, I try to get rid of them. Like, so if they're in like an airtight container, they should be fine. But like, they're basically like online. They're like, throw out all the food or you may be eating a larvae if that bugs you. I'm like, ah, and like mm-hmm. I did a big Costco thing. So I have rice for the next 10 years that I'm oh, throwing no. out. I'm so annoyed. Anyway, so I'm going to pull everything out and then you have to pull the shelves out because in the brackets between where the shelf lives and the wall and the screw, tiny little larvae can be in the screw. I have to pull it. Anyway, I am every, and then 
So this is a double fucking bad week, okay? Pantry. <laughs> I'm on my nice trip. I'm living my best life, feeling rich, feeling fancy. And we, we had all this rain in LA. I have so much mold in my house, you guys. The entire bathroom renovation is on hold because the walls are open. Shit's dripping. They took the drywall off. No one fucking insulated this house when they made it. It's literally just cinder block and mud. And I'm like... Shouldn't you have, like, waterproofed this in some way? So there's just water pouring through the cinder block, coming down the hill. It's a f***ing disaster. And on top of that, okay, on top of that, the planter is leaking. Planter? What planter? You know when you walk up to my house, how on the left side there's, like, a planter with a couple bad trees? Yes. They're like ish. little baby palm trees. Like it's, it's really shitty. It's not even pretty. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have noticed it. Cause I haven't like redone it yet. The entire planter is ha- pulled out. Okay. We had to pull all the mud out of the planter, take all the trees. The trees are dead now. They're gone. You'll never see them again. So if you didn't notice them the first time, you're welcome. They're dead. <laughs> we took all the mud out, put it onto the driveway to see what the f- was going on with this planter. The, the, the lining that's supposed to keep a planter airtight is completely like disintegrated, but here's the best part about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have this anymore, but I had a hidden key in that planter. It was like my, <laughs> my emergency fucking front door key, like in case something happens, you know, if I'm drunk or I can't get in the garage or whatever, I had it hidden in a special place. You know, everyone has their thing. And when they dug up the planter, they dug up the key. The key is somewhere in this pile of mud. It's literally a needle in a fucking haystack. Let it's it the go. only key no, I have to is, my house. You need oh. to do this. This You're turning this into a TikTok and you got to pretend like you're on a game show and you got to find that key before the buzzer goes. <laughs> okay. Like, and I feel if like you can't just make one up because everything's fake on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> but now I can't now like Mariana, who helps me with my house is like, Hey, I can't get into the house. You can make another key. No, it's a it's her only old key. vintage oh. shitty. Like well, you, change, you can, you got to change. By the, the way, I called, I said, can you come make a key? I've lost my key. And they said, yes, if you bring us the key, we can make another key. I said, Just I don't have the, the key. lock. I'm going to change the lock. But then now all the locks, Becca, oh thank you so much for coming to my Ted talk about the lock. Chris mm. and I are having a major fight about it. So Uh-oh. this is an old vintage door with an old vintage thing. And if you just buy the little box, like I had on my old house that you can punch a code in, which seems like it would fix the key problem. Then there's going to be a hole in the door from where the old vintage thing is. So then I'm looking up old vintage things that you can match with a keypad. They don't can fit. The door is warped. It barely closes. That's all time for a new door. Wow. She's in shambles. <laughs> so when I said you couldn't wait to tell your story this on was Good Week, Bad Week, you're saying this wasn't a big story? <laughs> I'm just confused. I'm unsure. This is the big story. I'm unsure. Um, yeah. I am traumatized. The moths, it, it, moths, mold, and a missing key. It's going to be my next memoir. I <laughs> At love least it. it's not the, the wrong moderation. sconce, you know? Yeah. I was feeling very sconcy as this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little sconcy <laughs> for those new listeners. I also, I've, I've decided I'm going to start doing this for people who have just joined. Yes. I'm going to tell them backstory on certain things. Cause we do call back to the sconce a lot. Yeah. yeah. And the turquoise nail polish, which I covered last week. Yes. Yeah. Um, or two weeks ago. Uh, sconcy means Kelty had a good week, bad week at one point that went on for probably that duration. But really at the end of the day, all it was about was ordering a sconce and it arriving in the wrong color. Um, but it was that like was a 10 minute long ordeal and Becca and I both fell asleep during it. And then I just couldn't believe. And so since that time, Kelty's had a couple <laughs> Sconcy moments. They, Sconcy moments. They all are very much like home related. It's they the, are. Yeah, like the sconce moments. Together. I know. Anyway. When you went into detail about the bracket and the moths, I was like, <laughs> oh, we have we are. There's no turning back. <laughs> I just think you should be able to wipe a shelf and have yeah. no moths. The fact that I'm going to have to take out a screw gun. Is there insulation? I'm so sorry to scon- be sconcy as well, <laughs> no, no. but is there insulation on any of your walls? I don't think so. I think that's why it's so fucking cold in my house. Yeah, I was is that something say, that you do? Like you should have done during like a. You can do the poke a hole through a wall and do the spray foam. That they're gonna they, they're coming tomorrow to spray up the whole house, but it's just 
Good thing you have seven jobs. If you, and you listen can to this, this podcast, when I put this, uh, yeah, no, when I put this house up for sale, don't buy it. But um, no, I'm just no, kidding. you'll fix it. I'm fixing I mean, everything. Kelty, you love you love being in a state of this. No, I actually, it's I pushed myself too far. I love a state of crazy. It's too crazy. Okay, to Barb. Who's going um, next? I'm going to go. Take me away from my, okay. my sconces So my good week is I'm on the hunt for, well, it's an, it's a bad week because I don't like being on the hunt for a photographer and videographer for the wedding, mm. but I'm, I'm on the hunt. I've been talking to a bunch of photographers and videographers trying to find the right one that lives in Europe and I'm not talking to somebody from Utah. I found these, this amazing couple and we've kind of been chatting about, you know, their vibe and what we'd be going for. And I got an email from them this morning and they're kind of just talking about how, you know, we would be great for their website and you know, they're like the vibe that they look for. And then they go, uh, you're the first couple that we'd really love to work with being part of the wedding. The pictures would fit perfectly. What we like to show on socials. Also, Jared is our dream groom. No mention about me, just Jared. (laughs) <laughs> wow jared is our dream groom like who who is that it's well so you know what funny. they're clairvoyant because if i were to say a dream groom would be jared and a nightmare bride would be jack <laughs> only only from this perspective of like they're in charge of taking pictures and video. It's the most important thing to you about this wedding. Yeah. You're yes. the most particular person with a very specific point of view that sometimes has a trouble actually saying what it is. Yes. So you, they are not, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> they're not. Right. They're, gonna have, they're like, we're going to have a hard time reading your mind. Yeah. Yes. That you won't be able to express that you want it shot from a 23% angle <laughs> from the floor with yeah. two floras in the picture. Jared yeah. is going to just cry like a baby and be and his be sweet dream. little like <laughs> salt of the earth santa claus self like just beautiful earth his beautiful flowing locks are just going to be like lightly fluttering with the the wind wind. like Mm -hmm. no stress you know what i mean it was so funny i was dying i sent it to him he's like this is a first (laughs) no mention it was just so funny no mention of how great our pictures could be together but jared is our dream room i love it so much i think i'm gonna choose them just like just because of that you should. They're so good. Their work yeah. is like amazing too. Anyways. Um, okay. So that's my good week because I'm like, now I can actually, Jared is an asset, you know, yeah, like you should be selling him. I Jack, can, he's always been an asset. I know, but like even more so. And it's the yeah. hair. Do you remember last help. night when I was spiraling at three in the morning and all I did was tag you in wedding dresses? Oh, I forgot about that. Don't do that to her. I know. I'm such a nutcase. Why am Don't I doing do that? that? I needed to outward my spiral. No, I still need else. it. I, I've gone back. And this is a whole other thing. That's I've like, gone back on my wedding dress that I thought I was going to choose. Okay. Oh, God. We're, we're at a crossroads again. Just wear a bikini. <sighs> I should. <laughs> it would be on brand. Um, Honestly. Okay. okay. My bad week. Kelty, did you feel the earthquake last night? everyone's talking about it. I think I felt it subliminally in my brain, but I didn't like, I didn't, I think I dreamt that I was in an earthquake and it was probably earthquake was happening. Probably. <clears throat> um, an earthquake happened last night and it was like a 4.2 or something like that, which Pretty is big. like whatever, yeah. but it was right like in the ocean, right next to my apartment. I have never in my life felt an earthquake that it was this crazy. My, yeah. and I felt like it went on for like 30 seconds. Uh-huh. I was shaken. And then my bad week is Throughout the entire night after this at like 2 a.m., all I had were dreams of being in a tsunami and I did not fucking sleep because I was like, I'm on the marina. Like if something oh. really bad happened, I would be taken down. What was the thing that we, what were you calling it? Like the big storm or the. Oh, mega storm. Mega storm. <laughs> we got a taste of it, bitches. And it did not go well. I'm just letting everyone know. So if you're listening from around the world. I had an episode. We talked about the megastorm. There's a megastorm coming to LA. Half LA is going to flood. And these girls were like, no, I mean, we're fine. We got a quasi megastorm. We got like four days of well, really heavy rainfall. The whole city shut down. My house is moldy. LA, things are sliding down no, the hills. LA it, is not meant for megastorm. No, mm-hmm. it was Northern California that got the megastorm. We just got like the remnants of it. Well, I got a lot of DMs where people were like, you were right. Is this megastorm? No, that was separate. I think the mega storm you were saying that it would like wipe out LA. Like yeah, we're no, still it's here. way bigger. We got no, a no, taste the of one, mega storm. 
the one that just happened it was not no one's calling it the megastorm no, no. that was not the megastorm that was a pre-test of megastorm <laughs> right. and well, we failed know, was a where pre-shock. we don't have megastorms here in texas where we're landlocked like motherfuckers yeah. okay yeah but yeah. what is your what happens there like what's the well, i mean you can't get an ex- abortion but you won't well, wash yeah. away <laughs> bingo <laughs> that's what it is landlocked yeah. it's hot as in landlocked the summer. vagina locked and it's, it's landlocked and vaginally locked yes. i will be floating <laughs> on a piece of wood but you know what? i still have my rights that's true i'm sure you can find someone out in the pacific ocean to perform your abortion oh god yep. we've gotten so far we've and gone so too far inappropriate. Yeah, what's your it's too far okay okay my good week is i know you all are wondering about karen goes to college yeah. um, I am. it's my series of becca at middle age going back to college to complete her one class that she missed many years ago i am officially enrolled i think i earned a credit just from that process of how unorganized and insane oh it's Good still job. going on i'm still trying to apply my merit scholarship to my tuition fees you know oh, nothing no. is easy um but i am enrolled and i have started my class and the class that i'm taking this semester is called introduction for write to writing for screen oh cool so wait can you turn lady secrets into a tv show <laughs> well that's a great question I'm not sure because we see the Lady Secrets book as being more of an anthology type Mm, series. So that might be hard concept wise. Anyways, so now I'm having to do things that I thought I would really hate, but I'm actually loving. So my my um, assignment this week is I have to watch Whiplash the movie, the award winning movie Miles Teller from a couple years ago. It was based off of a short a short movie. A short is what they call it in the biz. Uh So I have to watch the short, watch the movie, and read a bunch of notes and read the script for for the original Whiplash script. And guys, I have found something that interests me. I love this. It's great. I mean, it's not as torturous. Granted, I'm week one, so stay tuned. (laughs) But I was sitting there last night, and I was like, you know, I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I love it because it's like kind of, well, it's kind of like just going back to college as an adult. It's like you actually want to learn. Yeah. Like it's not like you're dragging your feet through the whole thing and you're doing something interesting. Yeah. And creative. Like Like, I want to do it. It was crazy to read the original script of what Whiplash was and see what they did on screen. And basically I think I've cracked the code to make an award-winning film. You basically have no dialogue whatsoever. Oh. (laughs) they cut so many scenes so many lines and i'm like you just they just kept what was necessary you know it's just miles teller's hands bleeding yeah putting it in the ice bucket it's all Mm -hmm. showing and not telling so you guys i'm already an incredible screenwriter just call me aaron sorkin um thank you so much for Karen she's, goes to college. She's I can't two years wait to away see from being an EGOT, guys. Yes. Okay. So my bad week is that I am Zach loves to golf. We all know this. Mm-hmm. I think it is so strange that golf courses have such specific dress codes. Yeah. Weird. And the one that we have here is one. Of, it's one of the more traditional kinds, and you cannot wear jeans. Obviously, that makes sense to me. But women cannot wear athleisure like i can't show up in a a lululemon yoga pant i have to be in golf attire which like a pleated skirt like a skirt or a short or a skirt or a a, i don't know a khaki pant a khaki pant whatever so i don't golf but sometimes it's nice on like a friday afternoon if zach and i get done early with our day like to ride around in a golf cart drinking a frozen margarita is a dream sounds fun so last week we were about to go and Zach was like, okay, let's go. And I was wearing Lululemon workout pants and I was like, can I just wear this? Do you think I'm going to get in trouble? He's like, I mean, you can't wear it. It's like we get these passive aggressive emails all the time about dress code. I had a meltdown like you cannot believe. Oh, no. It was psychotic. But I had a realization that I have since living in this neighborhood been trying to find what the f- do you wear? On a golf course, if you don't want to show your knees, anybody? A capri pant. Oh my God, it's capri. all bad. And still look cute. Sorry, I should have oh, added sorry. that. Oh, sorry. Okay. And yeah, yeah. We can cover the knees. A midi can, skirt? I, 
or there's no like golf midi skirts I guess. i'm sure there are but like i They're don't know if ugly that's, that's the look but for you i was like i feel knee so- pads <laughs> i think i need to start a line of golf attire for women who want to look cute as f- but not show their knees Yes, I don't know what this I would be. I don't think it's possible. But I had a, a melt- I like that. <laughs> <Knee pad. laughs> I had a pads. meltdown of epic proportion. It was actually devastating. It was devastating. So it's because you're if anybody. You're working. You're working too hard. You're working too hard on that screen. The yeah. The, you know like, your script. You know. Yeah. It's no, like, but I'm still gonna moments. Matt Damon, I'm, Ben Affleck. Like, calm down. The Oscars like already but, in for this year. You're fine. Don't be yeah, stressed. Yeah, but when I want to go unwind after writing my screenplay, I want to be able to go on the golf course. Can and, I? And, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I feel like a linen or not a linen, a nice polyester, not gonna need to be ironed mm-hmm. palazzo pant could be great. Palazzo pant. Do you know what that look. is? Yeah, but like I have a pair I wear to the beach that's like elastic waist. It's very comfortable. And then it's just a beautiful fabric, kind of like a flowy, light Mm. pant situation that you can't really see the shoe. I don't know what the shoe rule is. It's probably ridiculous. It's so Um, stupid. Anyways. You could wear like a nice little platform (laughs) sneaker and like a nice little collared shirt and you could be like... Palazzo yeah, pants chic. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have to do some research. On I mean, like unfortunately for you, the palazzo you pants are going to be too long, so you're going to have to get them cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Capri. I don't know. Back to the I Capris. Don't... Back to Capris. <laughs> Actually, I was laughing because um, um, Jack, our uh, Panic at the Disco, made an announcement that they're going to stop being a band or whatever, yeah. which like, you know, great. Okay. And I was, I was having like a trip down memory lane from like when panic first started. And I have a picture of me and Ryan Ross on the beach and I'm in a jean jort, <laughs> like a, oh. like a capri pant. Like oh, it was like 2003. No. Do you guys remember those? Yes. It was like a long jean. It wasn't a full jean and it wasn't a short jean. It was like yeah. a below the knee wide leg, like Y2K pant. And I was like, honestly, I'll send them to you back. This could be something. Yeah. They could be full length on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like ankle raiders. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be right back with the home edit. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by our friends at Just Thrive. We've been talking about this. We had the creator on our podcast. I live, breathe, die by their two products, the Just Thrive Probiotic. I've been taking probiotics my whole life. As Tina explained to us when she was on the podcast, this one is like in a spore capsule thing. And so it doesn't get eaten up by your stomach. It actually makes it down to your gut. Also, my new favorite is the Just Calm. At night when I am like on a 10 and it's time to calm the F down, Kelty, and eat emails and anxiety and I'm just feeling crazy and a workout and all these things won't help. I'm just popping two just calms. I don't know what it does, but it's magic. It's like giving myself a deep breath when I can't manage to give myself a deep breath. I love this brand and their stuff really works. And right now all Lady Gang members can get 20% off a 90 day bottle of Just Thrive probiotic and Just Calm at justthrivehealth.com with promo code Lady Gang. Go to Just Thrive health.com and our promo code lady gang will be there and while you're there check out all the other research-based products for gut and immune health there's something for everyone there's even a probiotic for your little fur baby all with the bottom of the bottle guarantee take control of your health this year you're gonna love it and there's a money back guarantee go get it just thrive health.com with promo code lady gang now back to the lady gang Our guests today are the reasons that all of you have spent so much money on bins. Their business, The Home Edit, spans across the U.S., has spawned two New York Times bestselling books. They are the stars and executive producers of the Emmy-nominated show, Get Organized with The Home Edit. Plus, they have their podcast, Best Friend Energy. Their line of organizational products is sold in over 25 countries. Please welcome to the Lady Gang, the icons, the women who changed our lives, Clea and Joanna, a.k.a. The Home Edit. Hi guys. Welcome. This is such an honor. We're so excited to be here. Yeah. You make us sound a lot better than we are. So I know thank it's, you what a that. disappointment for the truth. Hard I know. No, it's not true. And I want to start by taking this to our real, like real lives. And Clea's husband is uh, a saint on earth. Can yes. I just say that out loud? Yes. Yeah. He's walking. He's, he's 
puttering around the house right now. Okay. So he can't so hear you, but he's her here. husband's name is John and John is a red carpet photographer and photographer and is very well known in the business. And I am a loser who loves press and loves having my picture taken. And I have been on these red carpets for now 15 years. And when I first started and I came out in a top hat and a loofah dress looking (laughs) tragic at the American Music Awards, all the photographers would literally like put their cameras down and be like, this bitch, I'm not taking this picture. This is going nowhere. And sweet John has been such a supporter and just always was so nice and I just thought he was the coolest person. And then when your show came out, I was like, wait, this is, this all makes sense. So I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to let him know. Um, It is, it is actually so funny. He has so many stories of like back in the day, Paris Hilton would like come up to him on the carpet and be like, look, my friend, Kim, can you please help her out? Like she just. She just needs like a photo to get her start. She's my assistant. Like she's, you know, she's struggling out here. And John was like, oh God, okay, fine. Like, I'm not, not going to like turn her away. And, um, but you know, John is in the business of saying yes to people just like Joanna and me. And I think that it's really served him well. We are not above any human being. And, um, who are we to like judge someone for their worth? So, um, I think that John's the same way and, you know, like be kind to each other and you you never know. All of a sudden now, now Kim's like, thank you, John. Thank you for being (laughs) the only person to not put your camera away. Wow. And look what happened to Kim and look what happened to me. I'm still asking John, please, can you just do my friend Kelty? (laughs) I'm still like, hi, can I have a photo? Like, I mean, when (laughs) we, sometimes we're at like a gala, like at the same thing. Like at the White House? Yeah. Actually at the White House, (laughs) Joanna and I are the unbearable ones because we, we've been to the White House now a few times and like, we know it pretty well. And John and our, and Joanna's husband had never been. And they were like, we have to go to the bathroom. And we're like, oh, okay. So you just head down the stairs and like take a ride at the library. And then like you see a yellow room and then the restroom's right to the left. And, but like at a gala, John is, John's a Gemini, which I never understood before because he's so, he's so um, consistent with every, like he is who he is, who he is, except during a work situation, he becomes like an alpha. And I'm like, wow, oh. okay, copy that. So Hot. we'll be, we'll be like yeah. at, Uh, an event and like it's all fun and games until like Alba shows up and like then it's like cameras you know Kylie's over here Jessica Alba's over here Clea is gone from the show like I am not (laughs) no photos of Clea so it's okay I've learned I've learned to accept it yeah we're below his pay grade I mean let's get in line (laughs) you know truly like if no one else is around I get a good photo but other than that there is a hierarchy. <laughs> Does his alpha energy turn you on? Or are you like, um, a little, hello? A little, yeah. yes. A little, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Except here's the thing, though. John t- also is, he shoots all of our ad campaigns, all of our stuff, too. The, all of a sudden, on a shoot, like, when I was in cancer treatment, John also was, like, a plus, plus, plus husband. Like, even the doctors were like, where did you find him? He's mm. amazing. And he would like coddle and care for me for like every like don't touch that don't pick did you need to sit down like is is it cold enough in here is it too hot in here you know like everything and then who joanne and i were on a shoot <laughs> shockingly for jiffy lube and we were we were on a shoot in like a 110 degree day yeah. and it was at a jiffy lube that was like we had to keep stopping because ironically it was a lunchtime time set it was like 10 12 30 and we were right next to a chick-fil-a drive through so we kept having to stop video because of the sound and i was like dripping sweat i'm wearing a wig i'm like i'm dying i'm in chemo and i was like john you're about to lose your wife like i'm passing away <laughs> and he's like you're not gonna like the shot He's like, oh. we're just, we have to keep going. Sorry. Like, no. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, absolutely. He's like, Clea, you're going to have to do it again. Otherwise you're really going to hate how you look. He's like, <laughs> you're not going to like, he's like, you're not going to like the way you look. So sorry. Like got, got to, got to keep rolling here. I was like, wow. All right. Okay. Wow. He's got the end game, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's so crazy. You know what? The shoot looked really good and you it, didn't it have to play. Amazing. It, looked we, amazing. it was a double win. Yeah. It looked amazing, but I was like, Oh my, like the opposite of the yeah coddling dog. husband. Yeah. yeah. He has been so overprotective, like helicopter husband. And then all of a sudden on that shoot, he's like, sorry, <laughs> if, if you pass away right here, it's, it's what it is. <laughs> Gotta get a photo. <laughs> Gotta, get the, Gotta get the shot. So anyway. Well, so 
Con- first, congratulations on all your success. Um, I'm sure people come up to you and tell you that all the time. It really is incredible what you've built and being so authentic. Do you have? Do you feel like you've had to change at all in business in your lives? And then, how have you guys stayed friends? Because yeah. the lady gang, you know, like we may kill each other in 2023. <laughs> We're not sure, but like then you guys are, you know, you're you're doing a hundred things and you're always together. And there's only two of you, so there's no like third girl to blame it on. You know, it's, uh-huh. it's true. There isn't a third girl. Joanna and I have to stick together in all things. Like all we, things. we can't kill each other. We also have pretty hefty insurance policies out on each other. So, um, <laughs> like that is real. So if I ever go missing, Joanna did it. Um, no, or, no, or John, we or John. This. yeah, John or Joanna. Or yeah. Both. Wait, they you can teamed up. You could do this for your business partner's life insurance policies. You kind yeah. of have to, because yeah. oh. We yeah. have to do this on Kelty because we've said all along, like Kel- Lady King will never last if Kelty dies. Jack no. and I, yeah. we can go. That's you, right. You got to look into that. Like, you gotta look into it. She should be hanging up and calling your insurance agent now. Yeah, we're like six years into this Shit. and did not know that. Seven it's- years. So heard, you heard it this here is first. why they just sold their company t- for like zillion dollars. Ugh. And I see pictures of them on a private jet. They're obviously better at life than us. And Damn it. Fine. We just well, have better. We have better advice. Like we wouldn't know. Joanna no. would never have thought this. Our lawyers and our business managers were like, have you ever considered? And we were like, oh, huh. Interesting. Interesting thought. Right. Um, hmm, right. So, you know, I, I think that, but the truth is Joanna and I, We don't fight. We've literally had maybe under five real fights in our life. The rest of it is just the way we talk to each other. Just Just like a a squabble, you know, like the way sisters talk. And it's actually funny. The more stressed we get, the tighter we get. Like when we're filming and every, when we're filming, it is, it's truly like the hardest period of time. It's so rewarding. And it's actually kind of like being in summer camp. Like at the end, it's the most fun time when you're filming. It's like 14 hour days. You're so stressed. You're, you're trying to hold up your cast, your crew, your everything. And it's just so hard. And Joanna and I somehow like normally we'd be like, Joanna, that was a stupid idea. And And now we're like, Oh, okay. You probably meant that to be smart. I you, am you really, really, really tried. I see you. I see, I see you. what you were doing there. Yeah. Wow. I am here. For, like we just somehow, I don't know. It's, it's like we fold inward and we just have to cling together. Um, and you know, I, I think that that's actually the key to our success. We don't have time to fight. No, we, we just have to push through. And we have so many things that we're always doing. You don't get that much time to devote to any one particular thing because you're like juggling so much. And I think that's key to our success. I think, you know, what makes it easier too, is when you really just accept someone for who they are, the good, the bad, the ugly, it makes it so much easier. It's predictable. Like we're both very predictable to each other. So it's, you don't even waste time getting annoyed because you're like, I, of course, she's going to want to leave early, which is me. And you of know? course I'm late, which is me. Right. So, so that, it's just know, the way it is. You just have these, you know, these standards about each other. And so yeah. you don't waste time being petty. There's no pettiness. It's either one of five big fights that we've ever had, or it's just like a non-issue. Right. And we're all actually, shaking our heads because we're all like, yep, that's what we've learned with each other too. That's yeah. my theme for 2023 is like, I can no longer get annoyed with people. If I know who they are, yeah. that's my fault. Like that's I right. need to you accept that. I accept it. I need to accept them. And my standards have to be wherever that meet with them, wherever they're at. It's so much yes. better. Oh, it's, it's so, so much, much better. better. It's so it's much so better much to meet people where they like, are. Not in disappointment about other people. You're just like, I'm choosing to have this person in my life. This is who this person is. Mm-hmm. Oh, amen. Damn. And, you know, I, I will add another aspect of it. Joanne and I have already agreed, like all these years later, seven years later, seven and a half, that we know the other person doesn't mean any harm. So mm-hmm. like, even if they did something to actually offend you, you have to go in with the mindset of like, it might've really pissed you off. It might've really been irritating or whatever it is, but you just have to let it go. Because again, if you know someone's intention, you know, it's, yeah. it, is it that bad? It's like, are you right. going to be that mad at your mom forever or your husband or your sister? You know, it's like, let's let it go. It's easier. We're also all awful. Yeah, <laughs> right. truly, truly. Right. All humans. Yeah. 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 People right. are impossible, right? Yeah. I mean, all of us are so impossible all the time. Oh, We're yeah. terrible. So it's, it's easier. It's easier yeah. to just let it go. Okay. So this morning or last night I was um, doom scrolling on TikTok and I saw Julia Fox do a tour of her New York city apartment. And there's no one that needs the home edit more than Julia Fox. Oh so my just God. Take... I've heard that. I'm a little it's... afraid of her. No, yeah. I, I, oh. I am. 
I am terrified by the shoe boxes on the stove in the kitchen. Like she needs product. We need, we like, we need to get in there, but it actually led me and sorry, Jack, I'm going to meet you where you are. It led me to Jack Vanek because Jack is saving up for a house right now. It's impossible to buy a house in LA. She lives in an 800 foot apartment in um, Marina Del Rey with her fiance. She's also paying and planning for a wedding. Yeah. And whenever we get sent free stuff, which is like the best part of being in lady gang, she's like, I don't want it. I don't have anywhere. I'm sharing a closet with my, with my fiance. And so like, I want to know f- direct from home edit Queens. Like if you don't have a pantry, if you don't have somewhere to put, like what is your secret to using the product and like getting organized when you are in tiny town? That's, I, this okay. is exactly what I was going to ask. All right. You're going first. So I'm sure I, we'll I'll, I'll go first. I know All we're right. going to say the same thing, but yeah. I have, I have some nuances. Okay. All right. Let's hear and it. I'm going to, I'm going to pin Julia Fox over here because okay. I have thoughts about that. And I'm <laughs> literally like terrified of her. So, um, <laughs> but here's the thing. When you live in a small space or a large space, the, the same rules apply. You cannot exceed the space you have. You have to be realistic with your space. We have dealt with people who have 17,000 square foot homes who are still filling it up. So again, Ooh. you have to be respectful of the space you have. And if you have 800 square feet, you're not going to like magically get 1200 square feet. You still yeah. are living in the same space you have. So what you end up having to do, what we end up doing is being like CSI detectives where we are hunting for vertical space. We're hunting for unused space. So that could be floating shelves. That could be an over the door unit that uh, then gives you storage on the back of the door. It could be a cart where, you know, you can just roll it up to your dining room table and use it as your workstation. You know, there, there are different things that you can do to add storage spaces. But again, you're still working within 800 square feet. And we always say never fill up any home beyond 80%. It's like oh. overeating, like your space is going to feel too full. So mm-hmm. by declining free stuff, you're doing yourself a favor. You really sure. don't. You really, and it, by the way, if you want something that comes in that's free, that's great. Just you, you're going to have to get rid of something. You're going to yeah, have to I free just, it up because you'll max and you, out. And, and Clea is exactly right. And then we always also say too, and this applies to anybody, small or large space, you get the item or you get the space. So think about how much space you're, you know, when people hold on to sentimental stuff for so long and so, such a huge quantity, you know, you're paying what, $500 in rent. And if you think about the square footage that people are, what was the last time you rented a place in LA? Joy? No, 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 <laughs> no, I'm talking Where about are you living? <laughs> taking up a certain amount of feet okay. in a room. Okay. Is what I'm so, like, about. so like $500 worth of sentimental space. Is that what you're talking yes. about? Okay. That's right. what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thinking about it in a monetary way can sometimes work for some people or some partners. Sometimes partners are like, I get it now from a monetary standpoint. Like this is is this worth the space? Is this worth how I want to use my room? You know, and then it's about making choices. If that wedding dress that's sitting there that you're never going to wear again is, is worth your prime real estate in your closet. Great. Keep it. But if you can move it or sell it or do something else with it, you know, those are thick dresses. Usually that can go, you know, you can have that space back. Well, you can also box it up, put it under your bed or put it on a top shelf of a closet. Um, Thinking about prime real estate too, you know, there's a big difference between the the space when you walk into a house, the entryway is usually prime real estate versus a cabinet up at the top is less prime real estate. But there are a lot of tricks, again, for adding storage. Again, there's an over-the-door unit, which isn't the old over-the-door units that we used to have in like college with Mm -hmm. like canvas, you know, and like plastic. (laughs) Yeah. Like there are oh. actual pieces that, I mean, we make one, the container store makes one that are, it, it's almost like putting a piece of furniture on a wall. I mean, it looks- I was so obsessed in my new house when I moved a couple of years ago. I didn't even need the room, but I was so obsessed that I added them to like every door. Uh, no, oh. you'd, op- you'd open Joanna's closets and the closets are empty because everything's on the door. <laughs> and she's like, she just, it, cause it's kind of like a magic trick. Like it's like super chic and cool. And, and it's fun to like, you know, they have all these baskets that you can like, you know, Love. click into place. And so you have all your sprays lined up, your rags lined up, you're this, you're that. And so it, it looks very orderly. Literally, I got to go because I got to shop. So no, I'm like, now. I don't even know what this is. Like, it seems magical Jack, and I need it, it right now. It really is. And you can put it on any door, any door that opens and closes that isn't like an accordion door. Right. Um, and it's it's super helpful and it it doubles your space. It's um, amazing. It's amazing. And it's, it's great. It's great on a front hall closet, a, a primary closet, a bathroom door. Um, yeah, it's, anywhere. Really it's a magic trick, which is and why I'm obsessed. Carts are also a magic trick. Again, it's like to be able to use a corner of a room, a blank wall, whatever it is. Um, and, and it looks nice, you know, you merchandise it and you have and if floating shelves are a great 
place, you know, great thing to add to a wall. Like you can add storage that really helps, but you're never going to, you're not going to get out of fighting 800 square feet. You know, it just is what it is. I am looking at this corner in my living room right now that there could be a little cart there. Like you've already opened that corner for sure. And it's, and carts are cute. You know, we made an acrylic one. We made one because we were so obsessed. But you can get a three tier rolling cart literally at any store. They're honestly cute. Like even the ones like at Target or whatever, like you can get like a white metal one, a black metal one, a gray, you know, they're cute. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by all the extra energy I have while I drink Spark. It's AdvoCare's best-selling energy drink mix and our go-to for extra energy and focus any time of the year. Spark has the right amount of caffeine that we all need for busy days, B vitamins to support my body's natural ability to make and sustain its own energy, and neuroactive ingredients to keep me focused and alert. So when I am crazy busy with, you know, the girls are going to laugh at me, but my three jobs and this right now and being a dog mom and a wife and I I just like sit down to my computer and just blur out. I just think a spark can really help us focus, help me from crashing, and just make me a better human being. Spark is a great gift for the givers and receivers any time of the year. And you can grab a bag of spark for someone on your gift list or treat yourself this Valentine's Day when you go to advocare.com slash lady. Get 15% off your first order when you shop advocare.com slash lady today. That is advocare.com slash lady today. Hey guys, it's Kelty, and I wanted to let you know that we're still having the $10 sale on our tour t-shirts over on the website, theladygang.com, the softest, most beautiful, killer tour t-shirt. Who f***ing cares if you didn't come to the tour? The tour t-shirt was better anyway. It's super cute. We bought too many. We're having a blowout sale. They're $10. Head on over to theladygang.com. You can get them right now. And by the way, while you're there, both of our books, Act Like a Lady and Lady Secrets, are in stock, signed copies, and we're so excited for you to get them. And if you've read Act Like a Lady, but you haven't picked up Lady secrets it's like the perfect summer beach read which will be so great and summer's right around the corner so please pick them up thank you for the support thanks for keeping our business afloat and we love you guys you're listening to the lady gang so about a week and a half ago becca posted a ode to home edit on her instagram you want to tell them about it and then did you feel shamed did you feel like it's a hard standard you guys you really have a standard that is hard to match when you do it on your own i'm glad only in this world we have no other standard for anything else so (laughs) on any other level we fail miserably yeah this is our only thing It's crazy that you guys have become like the Coca-Cola of organization. So it's like you just use it as a, as a a noun. It's a noun. Like it's, or is it a noun or it's a verb? It's like, I'm going to home edit my life. So it's crazy what you guys have done and it's, it's miraculous, but exactly what Kelty was saying. I went in because my mom hired a company in Atlanta that did a really beautiful job with her pantry. And I was really jealous. She was sending me pictures of it. And I always screenshot everything that you guys do. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to do it. Needless to say, my caption was like, not quite the home edit, but (laughs) I went in and I tried my best. I'm pretty proud of what I did because I have a one-year-old now. So I had to swap out all the shit. There's these cabinets in my bathroom floor to ceiling. And I'm like, everything on the bottom right now is stuff he can get into. I need to swap Mm -hmm. it and put my towels there so that God forbid he can't chew it on a towel and die. But maybe the other mouthwash he can. So I go in and I do it. (laughs) Here's my problem though. I do this every six months and I don't know how, but I accumulate so much stuff and I try so hard to do the expiration date and follow the rules, but it's like, it always looks like shit in six months. So what do you tell people to keep this up? It's two things. One is be cognizant of what you're bringing in because a lot of times things just show up and especially if you're getting things too, it's easy just to like all of a sudden they appear and you didn't even necessarily want them or you can donate them. You know, there was another home for them. That would be a happy home. So I would say, and it's not just free things, it's things that people buy, but they have nowhere to put. So Mm -hmm. be cognizant, first of all, of what you bring into the house, because now you have to deal with it. Now it's your problem. And secondly, you need to have simple solutions and simple systems so that it's so easy to maintain. It's not that things don't get messy. Both of our, well, Clea barely ever gets messy, but my (laughs) home can get messy, but it's so easy to put back together in 10 minutes because the systems are smart. So you don't want to overcomplicate the systems. You don't want to overcomplicate the systems and you don't want to overload your space. If your space is 
alerting you at a six month mark that things are out of control, it means that you need to rein it in at three months. You Mm -hmm. know, you need to have a quarterly clean out system. And And that's not true for every space. But if clearly, if like your bathroom, if your beauty products, if all of that is alerting you that this is not at six months, I look like shit. That means right. that, again, you need to have a, a check-in earlier yeah. and you need to get, I I am guilty of this too. I think that bathroom products, beauty products, all of that, we get so much of it. Then we get samples. Then we get the little sizes. Then it's like a, a gift bag has, you know, like a lipstick that maybe I'll use at some yeah, point right. uh, and yes. they're small. And so yep. you end up thinking that you can accommodate it because it's small, but that small stuff piles up and all of a sudden it's exceeding its space. So I mean, we all have to kind of uh, have a come to Jesus with ourselves with that kind of stuff. Like it's not every space. Like I don't hoard kitchen tools, but the bath products I end up collecting a lot of. And after I think a good three months, after a quarter, if I'm not using it, like, do I really need that shade? Do I really need an extra eyeshadow palette that I'm definitely not using? I haven't used, I'm not going to use. I think it's totally fine to let it go. And I know it's kind of hard because we all are in this like scarcity mentality for some yeah. reason with like bath and beauty products. Always. Always. As though we're someday. Well, and the packaging is pretty. So it's really yeah. hard to, yes. to get rid of the things. Right. And it, you just have like aspirations of potentially using yeah. it. But I think after a few months, again, if, if, you're, if your system isn't calling out to you that it needs to be refreshed, then maybe you can keep it a little longer. But if your six month mark is like, this is where the you know wheels come off. You just, you need to give a, a harder pass at, you know, the, the quarterly mark. There's one thing I want to say that I'm just going to say out loud to you. Um, I said at the beginning of this episode of my good week, bad week that I have pantry moths right now. And so, um, it's really fucking embarrassing to talk about the, all this organization. Cause I consider myself very a type. I would, I'm like a very much a Clea and I, um, it's so embarrassing and I've had them for months and I can't get rid of them. So, um, in your next book or project, if you could do like some pantry moth help, that would be great. That's just my suggestion. It's so hard. I, we get it. We've done, we've dealt with this so much. I didn't know this was a thing. Me neither. They're tiny little moths and they can live in, they can chew through plastic, paper. They live, I've thrown out everything. Everything is in a home edit. Like everything is down, but then they can also, anyway, they were in the baskets. I had to, anyway, I'm not going to get. Can I ask a question? So you want, that's your request, right? Yeah, that's my request. And then my question is, go ahead, Becca. Oh, go. I want to be a good partner I didn't know to you, you right had now. a question f- to follow up. I no, my question gonna... is, Okay, go. my husband, when I'm stressed <laughs> out, he will find me in the bathroom reorganizing and these things. And he, he calls it my putts. What is it about <laughs> organizing that is so good for our mental health? Organizing is a form of self-care. And it, and it, it calms us. It has a physical property, which means you are actually physically clearing out clutter and, and calming an actual surface, but it really helps you calm your mind too. There's an act of, of sorting, of categorizing, of a physical tangibility of touching things and putting them in order. I mean, it, it makes sense. You know, you are, you are taking something that is potentially chaotic and turning it orderly. And that just it, it is soothing for the mind. It's, you it's know, something if, you actually have control over in such a crazy life that we all live. There's so few things we actually have control over, but you can control one little drawer. You know, that is so satisfying and it's instant gratification. You know, it's, it's amazing if you can knock down walls and rebuild a house or all these things, but it, it, those are expensive things to do. And it's not instant. A drawer, you can immediately take control. You feel like you're taking back control of your life. Yes. And, you know, it's, it, it's what the Japanese call satisfying, which is, you know, everything that it just, it feels good. You know, there's a visceral component of organizing that it, that gives you immediate satisfaction and makes your space look beautiful, calms your mind. Um, you know, I mean, it, I, I'm not much of an exerciser. Is that what people call it? Exerciser? <laughs> like, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't like do, th- you know, like, my, so my physical, like everything, all my agility comes from like balance, you know, like, <laughs> but I, I believe that cleaning up your home counts as cardio. I've always said yes. that. Like there's, it just like, yeah. it helps all things. It, it just helps all things. And at the end of it, you get the reward of living in a space yeah. that, that, you know, I, I have a, a crazy fanaticism about I need to physically know where every single thing is in my house in a racer. I don't care if someone asks me for something, I need to know exactly where it is because I have laid hands on it. 
I have laid eyes on it. I have laid hands on it. And I, and it is there on purpose. Nothing is accidental in my home. Everything mm -hmm. is purposeful because I've gone through it time and time mm -hmm. again. And I make sure that the only things I need use or love are in this house. And I think that there's real power to that, you know, and I think that it, it calms me and it's like, it's like one thing I can control one. Yeah. Thing. And it's not a one and done. I think that's the other misnomer about organizing is people think it's, you do it once and you're done. This is, this is constant maintenance. It's like anything else, getting your hair cut, exercising, eating healthy, anything that is good requires continual follow-up and maintenance. It's not a one and done. And I think that throws people off because they're like, I can't, I can't be organized because I did it and it didn't work. It's yeah. constant, you know, right. it's constant. All right. My final question. I'm sorry. I have another one, but I can't okay. stop thinking about it. You've been in so many celebrities homes and just rich people in general at this point. Um, <laughs> and true. it's on your show. Who has the most epic house? What's the most epic house you've been in, in your. Joanna and I love to play this game yes. because it's actually hard because we it have is been in the most like disturbingly beautiful homes. It's it, it, I honestly, I don't even know where to go from here. I mean, I like, <laughs> how do you even, there, there's, so, it's crazy. People's I houses. Say, but, but like, okay, let's play this. What about Joanna? You can go first. Your like personal, like, again, every home that is like fabulous, but like, what is your, like, if you could move into any home tomorrow, that like, random tomorrow. house in Nashville which means nothing to anybody on this podcast. The random house in Nashville. Can you clarify that? The, the first, the one, that client that I was like, this is the most amazing house I've ever seen. And it was seven years ago. It was when we started. Wow. I don't know which one you're talking about. Yes, you about. do. I can't think of the name. I can't think of their name. And it well, still holds up. Well, uh, the house in Nashville. Can, can you like be slightly more specific? So I need <laughs> sports, you know what sports per person. Sports person. Okay. Yeah. That's a fabulous house. It is oh. a sports person. I love, so we get tapped to like organize all sorts of people, but sports people are our favorite people because we have <laughs> no idea who they are, oh, like yeah. literally no idea. And I think that's good for them because like, I think that sports people have so many yes, man. like fans and it's not us. So like when we, <laughs> we went to organize in Miami, we went to organize for Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union. Oh, that was a fabulous uh, house too. We thought Dwayne Wade was just Mr. Union. Oh my God. We didn't know that he was like a very famous <laughs> yeah. sports player. So yeah. that was interesting. And we're like, wow, like he is, he, people love him. So that was, <laughs> but it's great because like no one cares about having us in their home. Cause we are like beyond oblivious. Yeah. You're like, right get around. me the product. I yeah, love beyond that. oblivious, beyond oblivious. Yeah. I am, I. You're like, you're like, get me a, a container and you're putting yeah. the Emmys and the Oscars <laughs> yeah. and like up I, on a shelf. I, you're like, I this got, would be great. I got the picture when I went in his shoe closet, which is different than his normal closet full of shoes. This is his Whoa. like sneaker closet. And I was like, well, okay. Like this is, <laughs> this is, he, he is a big deal. I believe. Yeah. Um, I would <laughs> Mr. say Union. Mr. Union. Mr. Union. Mr. Union. I mean, so cute. I know I was like, bring it on. So Who had the most like designer, like, you know, because everyone is sty getting stylists, right? Mm -hmm. So they pull the beautiful clothes and then they give them right back. Like, I'll tell you who doesn't give them back. Rachel Zoe. I was just going to say oh, Rachel Zoe. I saw the episode. That was amazing. And you were Rachel like Zoe making her decide between the Chanel bags. It was yeah. incredible. Rachel, Rachel Zoe, Zoe doesn't I mean, give them back. These clients are also so fun and so fabulous. I mean, it, which adds to, I think, the, the house experience. But, I mean, Rachel Zoe has a collection like no other. Well, I was going to say for my favorite, like if I could move in tomorrow, I would say... Gwyneth Paltrow's Hamptons house. Mm. That's what I would say. That's but like, part of it, part of it is situational. Like it's yeah. like, you know, the setting yeah. is so gorgeous. Yeah. I also take her LA house. I take, mo <laughs> I mean, you know, if you anything, had to anything that yeah. Gwyneth has, uh, but I, I just love her style so much. Uh, I know. It's just, it's like perfect, <sighs> impeccable. Perfect. Yeah. Everything is to a T. It's very, oh, I know it's so, so perfect. It's just perfect, but it's also what I find about her, which I think some people wouldn't expect, but she's, she lives very casually. Like she lives in such a like fabulous state, but yeah. she's a very like, like informal person. Like she's very warm. And I feel like her homes are very warm, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's Joanna, because wealth whispers. Wealth, wealth whispers. Wealth whispers. Right. You know what like, I mean? She also like lives for her kids and like her yeah, kids. Yeah, she's living, fabulous. You know, she's just, just fabulous. Yeah. If I could move into any of them tomorrow, I think I would, I would pick one of hers. I have a Montecito house. I bet that's really fabulous. I, I can't even Yeah, imagine. I think all things 
she builds are fabulous. Anything Her style covers. is impeccable. I mean, she just, but honestly, people's tastes are so interesting. And it like, it's the best part about our job is not even just the celebrity aspect at all, but it's just seeing different houses. It's so I would say the single most insane, incredible house I've ever been to is, does, is not owned by a celebrity, but it is a house in the Hamptons, same trip that we went on um, when we went to Gwyneth's. And that house, you pull in, and the first house you see, you're like, wow, like right on the water, stunning. And you're like, oh, that's one of the guest homes. Uh, like, uh, and it just keeps going from there. And I, you guys, I was flabbergasted. I've never seen a house like this ever in my life. And I still haven't. I don't care how famous the person is. This this was the craziest house I've ever seen. It was billionaires. Literally Love it so much. But wait, does everything in their house, this is the other thing I'm wondering. Does Do they own like a tong from Target? Uh, no. no. <laughs> um, I mean, some but, of the people probably do. I mean, I don't, maybe that person doesn't. The chef might, but right. like you also are dealing with like, mul- like, so my favorite thing, and I'm actually, so I'm building a new house and I, I'm like taking pieces of like the homes that I've been in and like trying to add my like t- tiny, small little way into like the new house that I'm in. So I have a prep kitchen in my new house. Mm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a rich person. Um, who like has multiple kitchens. I don't have a chef, but I have a prep kitchen. And, um, but all of the, the funniest thing to me is how many kitchens are props in these homes that we're in. So like the actual kitchen, the one with the fabulous, like marble Island, complete prop, like there are no drawers. Like it just, it's all a set, (laughs) which I think is so fabulous. But anyway, so it's like all a set. And I've told my husband, I've told our nanny in our house, I want the kitchen to be as much of a mausoleum as possible. Like I yes. don't want anyone using it. Dino nuggets are going to be made in the prep kitchen. In the, I love this. What's on, it's, the architect calls it a scullery. I can't bring myself to call it that. It just sounds so sounds like, terrible. Yeah. yeah nabby. So, um, but anyway, but like, I, that's what I aspire for. I aspire for my kitchen to be a prop. I, I mean, clear wow. half your house is a prop. Let's yep. be honest. Yeah. That's my goal. That's my goal. I think that my goal would be to just have the scullery kitchen and not even a prop kitchen to be like, that's how you rich I am. I don't even have to make myself a sandwich. I don't even know how to find the refrigerator. Um, can I tell you? So this is actually, this is, this is real. I have been in a house. She is a, a adjacent family member where the main floor of the house, all of a sudden you're like, you know, what's missing a kitchen and the kitchen is like lower level. Like that's, that's it's where it's like the Biltmore. Yeah. It's like, that's where the, the staff is. The staff is in the kitchen. So you're walking around and you're like, you know, what's really odd. <laughs> that there's just no kitchen. And I love how confident they are with that. Like it, they don't even try and pretend like there's a kitchen. They're just, no, I'm sorry. There's, just, there's a, a, just a void. There's just no kitchen in the top. It's there's, incredible. There's no wow. kitchen. Like you walk around and you're like, wow, there's a lot of living spaces, but not, well, not a single kitchen. This it's could like be Bridgerton. This, you don't, they don't walk in. Right. They just have tea in their living room. That's right. That's food exactly gets, right. Food gets brought up. So, but I just, I, the, the sheer confidence you must have to not even pretend you cook, you no, know? That, I, no, and, that's the house for me. I can't cook. Yeah, and yeah. because my space is so small, mm-hmm. I would store my leggings in my drawers in my kitchen. So like, that's my yeah. kind of house. I used to I do that. I, I went to college in New York and I would store my boots in the oven because it was extra deep. Very yes. Julia Fox of you. Yeah. And, <laughs> Very the, pan- and the pantry had um, my shoes in it. Yep. So Th- that's how I'm living. I'm really like, you know. have a Gucci hat sitting right here. Can you not go and get a <laughs> oh, home Julia? edit? Yes. Sometimes I'm like, the that's how she lives. She's chaotic though. No, that's she's chaotic. Thing. Okay. Um, listen. We love you so much. Thank you for coming on. Congratulations on all your success with the podcast. Best Friend Energy. You can get it anywhere you get your podcast. Obviously, get organized with The Home Edit on Netflix. We've already seen every episode. You can follow the girls um, at The Home Edit. And um, they're so lovely and wonderful. And um, I'm so happy, uh, just to end with, I'm so happy for your health journey and that you're feeling good and well. And I'm sorry about your puppy. And there's just been, like, a lot going on. Um, So thank you for coming coming and doing this and we're so happy for you um your husband's great joe you're great too your headbands give me life and um this is amazing please uh everyone jack will keep you updated when she figures out what to do with her corner and we will see you next Tuesday. tuesday 
Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my god, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday. All month long on Pluto TV, stream the biggest Tyler Perry movies free. Watch your favorites like Medea's Witness Protection and Medea's Big Happy Family. Join Tyler Perry as he goes on a couples retreat with Sharon Leal in Why Did I Get Married? Or Idris Elba and Gabrielle Union in the Tyler Perry directed film Daddy's Little Girls. Plus, Pluto TV has hundreds of channels with thousands more movies and TV shows available on live and on demand. Download the free Pluto TV app on all your favorite devices and start streaming now. Pluto TV. Drop in, watch free.